What is up everyone? It's me again, Gamerlush, with another episode of Final Fantasy Impressions. This is part two of story, story, group play, and community. Uh, store, before I forget, we start every show with a shot. This is Vodka, if everyone's wondering. And uh, cheers to you guys. Now, I want to start off with the picture of the, a couple of pictures of this experience that kind of stuck with me during the beta. One of the not it's not it's not even a big part of the story. It is a little side story that you're talking to the NPC that's get, moving you along in your story, and you overhear a group. These two over here, as you see, one's an archer and one's probably a thaumaturge. Uh, you can tell by their little rod. If you can't see, it's behind the little chat bubble. That chat bubble, you can actually move anywhere across the screen. So if you're missing anything on the screen, you can actually move the chat bubble. That, that that's a cool little quirk I saw. Anyway, go on. They're basically putting all the blame of the party's failure on the poor healer here, which is basically a giant uh, spoof, mainly in the MMO community. If the party is if something's wrong with the party, it's everyone else, it's it's always the healer's fault, or it's always the tank's fault. It's never the DPS's fault for some god awful reason, because of course DPSers are the majority of the people, so pff, can't be the majority of people. Anyway, I just thought it was funny that they pointed out this was a thing that they, I think, believe a quest right after you had gotten out of your first instance. Now, going through there, uh, after leaving off from what I was saying last time, after my first instance killing a boss, you get another, you get another quest that puts you in another instance, and then after that instance, you get put in a group with another instance. Now, I that I found that that was. I've never seen that before. I'm like, wow, they just keep throwing you into instances after instances after instances. And so, this leads to a point to where you have three different instances. I'm saying instances over and over again. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm tired. Maybe, it's like, maybe if I say dungeon, it'll be a little better. Okay, if I say instance or dungeon, whatever, it's the same thing. That you can basically keep going farming for for experience and you're still getting that group and chain experience for fighting so this kind of sub substitutes for the fact that in the last Final Fantasy 11 that you had to get in groups find a spot in an area which is appropriate for your group level and farm mobs this one it kind of instances is like oh god I gotta do it over and over and over and over again to me in all of these MMOs that have been putting dungeons and in instances in the in the game it kind of is attuned to saying, plopping your, your group, finding a camp, pulling monsters, and pulling them to the party. Now, I guess this would be in a funner way because you're constantly on the move. But for me, it's like, well, I'm just staying in one spot. I don't have to worry about it until the monster comes to us. Unless you're the puller, of course. But I found this one little funny. Uh, <laughs> it, the sign says... It's supposed to be in some kind of weird language, but obviously it says no entry. <laughs> that was a cute little sign, so I kind of took a picture next to it. And I think they give you three dungeons just right off, right off the back of 15. They don't give you that one, that same one you have to farm over and over and over. They give you a variety. And now the gear that I've seen drop, it's kind of been the same across the board for every class. You can om almost get every gear for your class in one dungeon. Almost, almost. Not all of it. So basically, if you feel like you're tired of this one, you can go to this one over here. Or if you're getting tired of that one, you got that third one right there. That was great. I thought that was a good idea. And they all could, they all tied a story. Run to this one. Oh, but hey, they need you over in Olda. And it's like, oh, it's cool, cool. They all they need you in Limsa Lomenza. Over there, it's like, cool, I'll do that. They need you in Gludia or wherever the heck that. I can't remember that third city for the life of me. I guess I should have looked this up before I, saw, <laughs> before I started showing this one. Anyway, and I thought that was awesome. So, when, uh, going through, I was like, okay, so now I have variety. All right, let's keep going. So as soon as I was done with those instances, dungeons, or whatever you call them, it go to a couple more, a couple more single player quests. I'm like, oh shoot, I thought this was going to be more party inclined. And it's like, yeah, you could do that, or you can go to party levies, or guild levies quests, and you can actually do a, it's basically a guild levy quest, but you can do it in a party. 
So basically, yeah, it's like it's. I see it's trying to try its hardest to get those people who are used to the Final Fantasy XI way of playing, and you need a party to advance. This seems like a good idea. And it's like it's giving you these different different options of look. It's like. You can go ahead and do single, but you know what? You guys really want to play the MMO experience. Here's some root mechanics. You have three dungeons for 15. You can keep doing that level. Do your party quest or whatever. And you know, you can be a level level up for, I believe, after I hit around level 20. So that was, five, it was a level 5 gap. But every instance that I hit basically gave me a level. So I got from 15, 17 to 18, and then I had 19 to where I did some single quests, about three or four of them, three, four to six. And as soon as I got to 20, I had, uh, t I believe, uh, one more, uh, two more instances to go. Yeah, I believe so. All right, I, but yeah, two more instances, well, at 25, I can't believe I'm forgetting that. Forgetting where I am to. Uh, oh. That's, that's kind of sad. It's like, oh god, you're saying how great this is, you already forgot about it. Well, it's been. four days already, and I forget. <laughs> anyway. This is uh, the. But what stood out to me was around to level 25 when you actually had to go fight a freak. And. Oh, before I go into that, I thought one of, one of the really cool dungeon fights, I'm going to see if I have a picture here. One of the bosses is a really interesting fight. I'm pretty sure there's been an epic mechanic in a lot of MMOs like this before. That it was a giant slime. Now, if you see in a lot of fantasy games or whatever, and, and even Final Fantasy, they have the slime creature. But you couldn't hit it. You had to get these bo bo the, the bombs... Fire bombs, a little fire thing that's like a staple in every Final Fantasy game. You had to lure it over to the slime, let it stay still, and make wait till it's about to self-destruct because that is its signature move. It's a bomb; it'll self-destruct. Some games it instantly killed your party. Some games it just like did all tons of damage. But whatever you do, you want to kill it before self-destruct. Usually, that was the thought mechanic. Oh, kill it before it self-destructs. But then it says, "Let the bomb." blow up on the slime it tells you right there plain and simple right in the right in the screen you actually see in one of these one of these pictures just say Spriggan is attacking your blast cap that's in that area it will say let the blast cap detonate on the slime it even tells you how to do it so you don't have to wiki this stuff if they keep that persistent throughout the whole thing it's like great it's like okay it's if you are standing in the blast it's your fault because this this mass is right in the middle where your guy is running, you're looking at your guy, or you're looking at a bar, or whatever, but you're always kind of, your face is always kind of centered onto the middle of the screen. And I was like, okay, cool, so we died our first time, which is fine, we, we understood, it's like, okay, we didn't understand the mechanics, because it blew the slime up, but the slime split in the two. I'm like, okay, cool, so we gotta keep doing this. First time, it was easy, put the bomb on the slime, it blew up. Second time, you see the Spriggan is attacking your bomb, your blast cap. The blast cap was fragile, so you basically had one person hitting the blast cap, leading her around, one person running to the Spriggan, this little rabbit thing, would try to kill it and kill a, the blast, the Spriggan before it killed the blast cap, while the tank would lead the slime around, and so you guys would, the, whoever's kiting the, the bomb, and whoever, <laughs> yeah, that's right, I'm making hand signals, deal. And, uh, and they would lead them together, and then someone would kill the Spriggan. <laughs> yes, I had a couple. Oh, yeah, speaking of which. It, um, excuse me. Um, so it was like, that wasn't even the main boss. And I was like, that was a, it's like, even though it's like, we died, I believe, t two times. Because uh, one of the tank was not communicating with us. Kind of like what I was saying in the last episode. It you know, those people who just refuse to communicate, and they're just kind of like dumbfounded. It's like, what'd you say? What? Well, maybe if I keep going, they'll understand. I'm like, whatever. So, at that point, we just kind of like, we let the Lancer tank, and I was still curious. So, and he was doing a pretty good job, even though he didn't have any secondary gladiator skills. So, pff, yeah, there you go. They're, uh, 
Sometimes you can have glad you don't need glad shields. Gladiator skills to tank. So anyway, ten. We finally beat it, and it felt really rewarding. It's like, all right, we did it. Good job, and we're all giving congrats and stuff like that, which leads to the community. I've never been angry at anybody except for mildly annoyed with the tank that we had that would refuse to speak to us. And you would, you feel that camaraderie. It's like, especially when you're looking for people, and your whole group is looking for people to join that party. You're looking in that little searching for party system. And yes, they do have the old system where you can put a flag next to your... your name in Final Fantasy XI. <laughs> Raise the flag. <laughs> but, uh... And... Yes, these are these were beta players. These were people who were really interested in the game, excited for the game, to deliver this kind of information to you guys out there who didn't, or unfortunately didn't, were able to get into the beta. And people for the third phase who basically got it because they had bought the original, like, put my box away. But, uh... Of the original Final Fantasy, where they were able to get in and try it out, and plus they wanted to beta test how PlayStation controllers would work for it. I played, I played a little bit of it, not as into, but it wasn't downright dreadful. I'd give it a try. Um, I probably had to ask my friend about it and see how he felt about the controllers here. Now, go after going through all that, you go through the quest and the story and. You find yourself enthralled with the story. I get the small little cutscenes in the in the little dungeons instances as well. You know, kind of put a little bit of immersion in there. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. And you know, the story kept me enthralled. It was kind of like playing Star Wars Knights of the or Star Wars the Old Republic, to where you felt you were involved in the story, the overarching story. The only thing was that you didn't have much of a choice in there. I think the first choice was. The, this person asks you a question at the beginning, and I think halfway through this, you get asked another question. But they really didn't affect the story or how people responded to it. But that's the draw. That's the thing. If you are a Final Fantasy fan or in love with these crazy kind of anime kind of story arcs that have been recent RP, RP, uh, Final Fantasy stories or animes or anything like that, and you're into those kind of stories, this story will draw you in and invest you and you want to know what's coming up next what's coming up next and what it made me chug on and basically okay deputy blah 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 is sabotaging this blah 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 so i need you to get five six of dynamites kill those kobolds for five six of dynamite Fuck. but i want to know what's happening and it's like i keep going back to the fact that yes these the same mmo tropes over there kill five rabbits get five rabbit butts come back to me it's like it's the same things like and always wondering it's like i i'm not the suit most cleverest person on the planet but what would be a great kind of quest that would make me interested in to you know make it to where like uh, i'm not i just want to see the story and not play the gameplay it's like because questing to me is like lowest thing on my lowest thing on my radar it's the party the party play mechanics the battling the story and just getting my person up to level up and seeing what potential it has to do in a party and like I don't give a damn what I can do by myself but it's, I really forgot the, the, the talk about limit breaks limit breaks are basically how with the momentum of the parties you, you keep fighting you keep healing you keep taking hits and you get these limit break bars at the top of your party area where the strength vitality you know six little bubbles I talked about in one of my previous videos and it does these really cool super moves. Of course, they brought limit breaks back from seven, and those are really cool, really cool like ultimate moves that you can use. And you're in a party, which is another thing. You can only do limit breaks in a party, so that just is another thing that entices you to to do a party combat or a group, team up with a group of people. I'm gonna try to get. I'm when I when the game comes out, I'm gonna keep continuing coverage on this game and keep bringing out videos for you guys to watch. And I'll probably make a mini series or let's play. I'll probably even move around, make a little machinima of it. And but it, it gets me excited to do party play again, way more. And going back to the story, it's like you feel you got you got your your classic tropes of these strange this, these strangers that. Uh, <laughs> That was, that was funny. I kind of wish I took a picture. There's these twins in the story. It kind of reminds me. If any guys played Bioshock, they kind of they remind me of the Lutices, but it's, they don't have that crazy gas 
personality was. It seems like, huh, what, what kind of strange, mysterious protagonist or a progressor of the story can you throw at twins? Perfect. <laughs> anyway, but the story seemed very interesting to me. Like, every, you have the three nations. The primals are basically raging war. The beastmen are raging war on all fronts. And then you still have the grand, great... Empire of ah, man, I wish I for, I forgot the name of the uh, the empire basically, but then you have this Darth Vader looking, <laughs> Darth Vader looking ass motherfucker. <laughs> Even has the breathing mask and everything. I was like, I was sitting there, okay, that kind of like yeah, that's kind of like Final Fantasy Darth Vader. <laughs> and then you have his three other judges, the one with gun swords, and this other chick with these two little gun, uh, full top. Uh, Tong flowers on his blade, tongue flowers on her arm, and then you get this huge Galka, burly Galka judge. And I thought, like, I want to know, like, what's going on with those guys. And I go into the uh, free, and later on, you hear about the beast men, what the these beast men uh, worships a different primal. And primals, of course, if you ever played Final Fantasy 11, those were summoned. And when you're a summoner, you actually had to take a quest and fight this, these primals by themselves with the only the help with Carbuncle, this adorable little cat raccoon green creature with a red diamond in it. Well, if you guys are oh, aware of yourself of the Final Fantasy series, you know that Carbuncle is like one of the summons. It's usually one of the first summons you usually get. But, and cast a ruby shield, I believe. It's like its default. <laughs> Basically bust the party. And when you beat the primal, you got the, the, yeah, the primal was summoned. The summoner got to basically summon it. So, I really hope that's the case for summoner. So, if we're all fighting Ifrit at this point at level 25, does that mean so Ifrit must be the first summons for the summoner class when that is finally released for the full launch of the game? That'd be awesome. And, you know, you talk to Ifrit, he's pretty, like, he's a pretty pissed off dude, and, like, uh, uh, they flesh out his story more, unlike Final Fantasy XI, to where he's just basically he's the primal fire. Go fight him, and something. <laughs> and he says like these cryptical words that you write before you start the battle. But this one actually was a harder mechanic, and actually had actually had uh, more mechanics to it. So you fight him, tank and spake at the beginning. When you saw the the cracks in the ground flame up, get the hell out of there. 101. Stay out of the red stuff. Stay out of the fire. Now, and then he'll drop a spike. Now, that everyone has to pull his attention to this, this fiery spike. Kill it, because if you don't kill it in time, he'll jump up in the air and totally just decimate the whole party. Just totally wipe the whole party out. I thought I was like, man, that brings me back to BC raids and stuff like that. If he didn't do certain things, he just wiped the party out outright. I was like, that's awesome. And we course life for that two times no wait i think we yeah fought about four times we watched that three times until our tank realizes that he kind of needs to jump in there too hitting that but if he had accumulated enough amenity which is basically hate threat he can able he can keep the freed on him on top of it freak has this awesome cool fire effect graphic out when he actually be firing people like man the the graphics still amaze me on this game, even though, and they cut, they optimize the graphics so much on this. It's so awesome. And then after you kill the spike, you'll see pillars of columns of fire just pop out of the ground. You got run out of those, and like it was a fun fight. It was really fun. I had a lot of fun. It was only for people. For, mostly, you'd think that that was like a raid fight, but no, it was just a four-man fight. And you just like I had that was the best experience I had in party experience in in a party in quite a while, and it's like, yeah, it's like, you have to think, and you know what? It was on a small scale. I know it's like people, hardcore people want to go into that whole 40-man thing back to the way it was in WoW Vanilla, and it's like, I understand that, but if you actually have good mechanics, and because you felt bad, it's like, oh my god, and you don't feel that, rem that animosity towards that person who just fell in the fire because there's so many people, it's like, it's really hard to keep track of that thing. Where how many people are dying in the fire and all that stuff like that. There's going to be raids in this game. I, I can't wait to experience it. This is one of the, just a 25 man, 4 man fights. I can't wait to see what they do for raiding. And it's like, I'm just, I guess I just got high hopes for the games. There's nitpicks and stuff like that, but 
I me, mean, people who are watching this channel are obviously looking forward to this game already. And I want this, this game to succeed. Not to, like, if it, if it goes to WoW numbers, awesome. But I really doubt that. And it's only pretty much back in the fact that it has a Final Fantasy name to it. And like it can grab people who aren't super into Final Fantasy. Take my one of my one of my best friends for example. He got into eleven. He wasn't the biggest Final Fantasy fan ever. He just loved the game for the the uh, the fact that he can play with us, had a great community, and he wasn't he couldn't point out a lot of things that were Final Fantasy related. So when we had conversations when we all gathered together, him and another best friend of mine would always talk about the Final Fantasy references in another game, but he wouldn't understand that until we explained it to him. He like, oh, so we had another. He didn't need that. And this one just throws it, this game throws the Final Fantasy references in spades. It's like, I'm like, I, I was like, I was sitting there, almost every cutscene, I was like, oh, that's from that Final Fantasy. Oh, that's from that Final Fantasy. That's cool. It's like, so they're basically grabbing those Final Fantasy characters, but it doesn't necessarily need to do that. It has word of mouth. If you guys can spread the word or anything like that, which I am, was, I'm actually getting another friend. He wants to try it. And he hates, he hates Final Fantasy games. But, you know, he just loves MMO so much, and then he knows that a big group of me and my friends are going to play this, and so he wants to play with us, and it's a community thing. So, of course, you'll have that inside joke and everything like that with story. But, I'm pretty sure I missed a couple of things. I'll probably cover that in my other videos. Guys, I'm really happy that you joined me for this. I'm going to be playing the face re face rebeta for this weekend taking way more pictures and giving you updates of what's going on see if they change anything and I, I appreciate it if you guys enjoyed your time with me like listen to what I said to say please leave questions below at, tell me what you want me to check out in the weekends and so I can answer your questions in more in more detail and if you liked it please give me a like subscribe leave a comment heck just looking at the channel helps me out a lot too and I appreciate all of you guys and as always, cheers and game on. Oops. <laughs> Later. Do not go outside the city and quest so much with yourself enough. But in this day and age, a lot of people want single player gaming for their MMO for some reason. I don't. What? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, it's convenient if you only got five. You're like. 15 minutes to play a game or something like that. Granted, I don't know why would you be jumping onto a game. That, anyway, I'm getting off the track. To me, playing an MMO means that you should get get other get together with other people, play in a party, get that social experience because <sighs> Final Fantasy.